Okay, here's my unboxing video. Oh no, dreaded packing peanuts. And there all four of them are in there in these packing peanuts. The dreaded packing peanuts. They're going to end up all over my garage. I just know it. All over. It's a windy day today, too. There's one of them. Two of them. Get rid of all the packing peanuts. And here comes a bust of breeze. And three of them. And four of them. This one's got a nick in the top. Oh, it's got a bad nick there and a bad nick there. They've all got the cables on them. Alrighty. Okay, a little further on these battery packs. Three of them came in really good condition. I got these from Battery Clearinghouse for $35 a piece. And for those of you that may want some more information about the packs, there is a plug there. Get some light on it. There we go. And I understand from JAG35 site that when you're looking at this plug, get it spun around where I can get the slot on the top, the notch. When you're looking at this, the pin on the left, my left, is the positive and the pin on the right is the, the negative. Little pin is the same way. Here's some information about the cells itself if you want to pause that and take a look at it. There's also a quite a large lithium battery pack sticker here. If you want to pause and take a look at that, it tells you model number, charge voltage, 42 volts, etc. And uh, screws on the end, screws on this end, and uh, on the JAG 35 website they show that they actually can't break these open very easy. It looks like you just take off the ends and they'll pop right out and you can slide the battery pack out. But I think it's because of all the goo that's inside that um, you can't slide it out. So they're actually taking a saw and cutting it down the top and splitting it open. Top and bottom probably. But anyway, I uh, just wanted to show you what these things are doing now. Um, I had one pack that was bad. It had a this thing was completely smashed flat, so I contacted Battery Clearing House, and they're going to send me a new battery in exchange for this one. So I'm starting to monkey around with this one a little bit. You can see I pulled off the little plug and uh, put an XT60 on there. Um, now JAG35 says that if you take the negative and cross it with the negative here, that it'll wake up this battery but I I could not get it to work and let me just show you what I'm getting out of mine to be careful not to touch anything if you can see that over there I'm getting 2.9 volts the other thing that Jahu says is that if you <clears throat> start applying a charge to this that it may wake it up as well so I've got a charger that's a small 1.5 amp charger, 42 volt. And then I have a 3 amp charger over there too, but I think I'll start with this one. They say you're supposed to start with a smaller if you're trying to wake the batteries up or if they've been discharged too, too low or whatever. So here goes nothing. No pops, whistles, nothing like that, so that's good. So now, let's just see <clears throat> if by adding a charge, it's going to show that we've uh, increased or unlocked that BMS, rather, so we're, we're going to increase the power here. A 
lost my angle so you can see it. What do we got there? 3.34. Ooh, 33.4. That's awesome. So, <clears throat> the dongle that you need, I'm waiting for JAG35 website to have the four-piece dongle with the Arduino um, already programmed and everything because that's my goal is to plug in all five of these or all four of them rather into one of those dongles but it looks like he doesn't There's know when they're the going to be pack. in here's the dongle I like to have the 4x D90 and you can see here it's got four ends on it so that's the one I want to hook up to all the batteries and then be able to uh, this little device here sends a signal back to the battery every five seconds or so it keeps the battery operating keeps the BMS operating so that's my plan is to go with this and use the existing plugs as a okay, backup plan. there's a guy that did reach out to Jahu and sent him a couple of his boards that he created and um, it looks really promising so I'm gonna order two of these as a backup plan in case uh, Jahu doesn't get his boards in but if you're interested his name is Aaron Shellhammer he's got a video on uh, YouTube showing the this FaustinBargain.org is the name of the site I'll just uh, okay so anyway, you want to go to this site, FaustinBargain.org. There we go. Okay. FaustinBargain. Bargain. Anyway, that .org. And he gives credit to Jehu on everything. And here's actually Jehu's um, review of his little device. Now here is his device. And you can see what it looks like. He's got a switch on it. It's very small. It doesn't have that separate bucks converter and there's the price so I went ahead and ordered two of those so again my plan is to go with those five four or five dongles if uh, Jahu, Jehu can get them and uh, if he can't get them in then uh, or doesn't get them in soon enough then I'm gonna break them down and use uh, use this guys here so that's it for now okay so this thing's been running for a few hours we started out at 30, I don't know, I think it was 34.7 volts. You can see now we're up to 41.6. I got it hooked up charging. I'm using the 3 amp charger. Sorry for the mess, I got my drawers open, <laughs> just using them for uh, things. Um, one thing that's making me a little nervous is we're getting cl pretty close to that 42 volts. And I want to make sure that this charger is going to shut off at 42 volts. I did have a uh, kilowatt plugged in. Earlier it was putting out 148 watts and now you see it's about 90 watts so hopefully it's starting to taper down at the low end of the charging cycle. So uh, we'll stay tuned and see if you can hear it running and the fan it's still charging. So we'll uh, we'll see what happens here. Okay, I have some good news. It got all the way up to 41.8. And then the uh, charger shut off. And you can see the green light is on, saying meaning that it's fully charged. And you can see my wattage dropped to nothing. And uh, then after the charger went off, it dropped to 41.6. And it's been about a minute, and it looks like it's stabilizing to 41.5. Here's an update. These two good packs, I went ahead and cut off the small connector and spliced in an XT60. And uh, did that to both of them. And sure enough, as soon as you plug it in and start charging it, it starts to show voltage. So... I also made up this pigtail. I'm not done with it yet, but I've got two of the legs on it. Made up this pigtail. 
going down to my uh, there it is going down to my 3 amp charger and so right now I'm charging these two at the same time ultimately I'll put hex D60s on these and uh, then I'll be able to charge all four at the same time my plan is to mount them in some kind of a box or something here's one that I made before I can turn it on here I've got it going from a uh, three scooter batteries the old style and then I've got it running through a box converter down here to a regulated 12.2 watts or 12.2 volts and then I've got that down to a uh, cigarette plug and also a couple of USBs um, I've been running this one through a small inverter pure sine wave uh, it's small it's 3 350 400 watts something like that I think it's 350 but it's pretty small so I'm charging up both of these batteries still waiting on Jay Hugh to have, get some dongles my plan is to get that four piece dongle with the Bluetooth or the uh, the adapter on it that keeps the BMS alive and they'll plug right onto here so that's my update for today